th then this thing came up for the advocacy commission where at the very last minute I th applied to be the chair. And I, I just wrote out a almost facetious application. I'm a bit embarrassed about it now because it wasn't very serious. Because um, they asked me what was my import most important achievement and I, I said, well, I have a performer's badge for the Mariposa Folk Festival. And that's the thing about my life I like the most. And in a way, in a way it is, actually, because it was, you know, it was, it was sort of like folk singer, hippie thing, right? It was like peace, love, and groovy and music. I love that. So I go for the first interview, and it was a fun, very strange process where the slate was selected by a group of disabled people who were elected by a disabled community across Ontario. And uh, so I went to, I got shortlisted. So I went to the interview, did the interview. Then I got, then it was down to three of us. And I did the next interview. And then I did the interview with the minister. And then they said they were going to appoint me. Uh, and I thought, oh my God, what have I done? So there was some to-do around that. Because, uh, of course, it was seen as patronage, right? Even though the minister had three names picked by the disability community, and the two other people on the list were not appropriate. Right? They were great guys, but one was really inexperienced, and the other was a even worse New Democrat than me, and totally lacko. So, couldn't have him. It had to be me. Um, and so I get this job, and I start trying to do it, and it's really bad news, because for the first time in the history of the world, this commission is run by people with disabilities. And they haven't gotten used to the idea they won. They think they lost, right? So they're still treating their own staff as though they're their enemy. And I'm thinking, what the fuck am I going to... So I, I spent a lot of time trying to make the board into a... Help the people realize you fucking won this, and now what are we going to do with it, right? Because we've got $18 million a year. We can do a lot of good stuff with this money. The pack of pony was such a pain in the ass. I got to tell you. She didn't want us to hire advocates. She thought that advocates should be volunteer. I'm thinking, Pat, are you nuts? So she boycotted the commission for a while. I had to go to her house and beg her to come out. Uh, anyway, never mind. Didn't matter because the both the Liberals and the Tories were determined to shut us down. And uh, I knew the Tories were going to win. My colleagues thought the Liberals were going to win, so they were lobbying their own ones. I said, the Tories are going to win, and there's no point in lo lobbying them because they don't care. They don't care about conservation. They're just going to do it. Because I know Tom Long. I know what they're going to do. They're going to come in with this. They're going to shut down all sorts of shit, and they're just going to do it. Uh, and you can holler, and you can protest, and they, they won't care. And that's what they did. So I spent uh, a year trying to get the commission off the ground, and another six months trying to shut it down. Uh, I had to fire 130 people. Um, and I wanted to leave something behind, right? So I did a tour of the province and we kept throwing stuff off the back of the truck of studies and programs and um, policies that we developed and programmatic approaches we developed and pushed them off the truck so that and the disability community was so demoralized by the cuts to social assistance that they barely could get their head up off the floor. But, uh, and the word advocacy was outlawed by the government. You know, you weren't allowed to write the word advocacy in any proposal or application. It was just really like 1984. It was hard to 